when we want to create, we have to shift from that survival mentality, from that survival state to the creation state. You have to be vigilant about where your focus is on. The problem creates the anxiety and creates a constriction that will assure that no solution can get through. Now, today we're going to talk about how to use the power of gratitude to amplify your results. Now, we hear a lot about gratitude. Everyone says, you know, wake up with your daily gratitude practice and, um, you know, write down those five things that you're grateful for. But I want to go deeper than that. And there's a few concepts that I want to share with you. And again, please, you know, let us know how this is resonating with you and what your takeaway is. Um, gratitude means that we are talking about what we're grateful for. Now, there's a couple of schools of thought around gratitude. Um, number one, it's recognizing what's already there. And what that does is it shifts our focus into what we have. Now, when you look at how do you create, how do you shift your mindset? How do you determine without a doubt the path that you're going to head down and um, carve that path out and create the results you want. It's, it's managing and being the driver's seat in the area of your focus. You know, Henry David Thoreau says, stand guard at the portal of your mind. So we want to be very diligent about what we're focusing on. You get what you focus on. So focus on what you want. So often we're focusing on what the problem is. So often we're focusing on what's missing. So often in life, we focus on what's wrong. Now that's a natural reaction. It's not a negative. It's not a bad thing. We're human beings designed for survival. So in order to survive, we had to look at what's missing. We had to look at the dangers around the world. We had to look at the, you know, notice the branch that's starting to make noise because there might be a tiger, you know, behind that. And so we're designed to focus on or to look for those dangers. Uh, but that's not the way to create. That's the way to stay in survival. That's the way to stay on high alert. And um, when we want to create, we have to shift from that survival mentality, from that survival state to the creation state. And in creation, we want to focus on what it is that we want to create. We want to focus on what it is that we want. You get what you focus on, so focus on what you want. Is it that dream relationship? Is it that dream career? Is it the um, the freedom that the money provides? Is it the optimal health? Is it the energy that gets you through your day so you can play with your children? So when you're focusing on that, then everything works towards the creation of that. You start to magnetize to you the resources, the people, the ideas, the habits will start to be, you'll start to be pulled towards the habits that will create those results. So the focus is number one. When you start the practice of gratitude, you shift your focus into what's already there. And that shifts your mindset into the positive spin on things. And when you're looking at things from a positive place, you're a lot more able to find solutions versus focus on the problems. You know, I just spoke last week at an entrepreneur boot camp. And one of the questions that was asked is, how do we, how do you manage, you know, when things like COVID happens and all of a sudden everywhere around the world, business is shutting down. And what I, what I shared was number one, it's, you know, you have to, you have to be vigilant about where your focus is on. If your focus is on the world is ending, there's COVID, everything's shutting down, you know, businesses are, are going out of business, there's no consumers, there's no money, all of that stuff. The, the problem creates the anxiety and creates a constriction that will assure that no solution can get through. When you're focused on, okay, you know, this is something that we can overcome. Look, we're still in business today. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? 
But the fact is, is that this is what's going on in the world. What can we do differently? And, and we have, and focus on the, the gratitude of the fact that we have the ability to shift things. Now, all of a sudden you open up to solutions. Now, all of a sudden the ideas come to you. Now, all of a sudden it's easy to pivot and change and shift things you're doing to meet the demands of, of the of, of the community so you can continue to thrive in your business. So that simple shift opens you up to solutions versus getting constrained and stuck in the problem, which really forces a person to get curled up in the corner and doesn't allow them to grow, doesn't allow them to open up to those ideas that will expand their possibility for their life. Gratitude makes you mentally stronger. When you're living a grateful lifestyle, you become mentally tougher. Now, it doesn't mean you won't still have to deal with stress. It just means that you'll be able to deal with it with a much more graceful edge. The situation or the experience that you may be in won't be as debilitating anymore. Practicing gratitude allows you to, number one, know good's still available to me. All I have to do is search for it. All I have to do is be open to it because the possibilities are there and it allows you to deal with things much, much more effectively. Gratitude also makes you healthier. Gratitude is not only great for your mental health, but it's great for your physical health. It boosts your immune system. There's so many studies done on this. It helps you to develop those healthier habits. If, if I'm grateful for my body, I'm not going to run it through the ringer. I'm going to treat it better because I know this body is getting me through the day. I'm grateful for the fact that it, it got me up this morning. So I want to take care of it. I want to participate in healthy activities such as exercising, eating healthier, eating things that make me feel lighter and make me feel more energetic versus down in the dumps. If I, if I wake up beating up my body because, oh, I've got this ailment and, oh, I've got this ache and, you know, and I, and I don't like my body because of X, Y, Z, then that punishing just begets more punishing. And then I start to abuse my body even more. Um, gratitude makes you more productive almost instantaneously, because again, what you focus on um, you start to put energy towards and you get to get energy towards it. So if you're focused on things that are working, then you get motivation to produce more of those things that are working. And um, you can you can absolutely start to, instead of feeling like you're swimming upstream, you've got energy behind you that's pushing you towards something good because you're already recognizing something good. You know, I always say what you appreciate appreciates. If you appreciate something, it will appreciate, it will magnify, it will grow exponentially. We're designed to be grateful for things that are in our lives, to be happier, to focus on the things that are right, um, to amplify again that happiness. And so, you know, I truly believe we live in a more universe. You know, it's it's kind of like if this more universe just, again, gives us more of whatever we think about, whatever, whatever energy is occupying my space. So if I say, oh my gosh, my life is incredible. I have this beautiful home. I have a healthy son. I have a healthy body. I have money to pay for the electricity. I have clean water that I have access to. I have energy to do this live call. I have a computer and internet that works. I am so grateful. I have this incredible life. The universe looks at me and says, really? You think you have an incredible life? You have you think you have all these good things in your life? You haven't seen nothing yet. Here's more. And so the universe will provide more for me. Now, if on the other hand, I say, you know what, I have a, you know, it's kind of tough. Like I don't have a 24-hour butler and I don't have this car that I want. And I can't, you know, I don't have a penthouse in Paris overlooking the Eiffel Tower and I don't have a yacht and I, you know, life just really sucks. I don't have the, the millions of dollars in the bank. And, you know, I don't know where my, you know, my, my next paycheck is coming from. Life is really tough. Life is really hard. 
The universe will say, really? You think life is tough? You think life is hard? You haven't seen nothing yet. Here's more. And so if we have a universe that is willing to give you more of whatever you are, whatever you have, whatever you are showing up with, why wouldn't you want to celebrate those things that are available to you? Celebrate those things that are working for you. Celebrate those things that you do currently have in your life, knowing that the universe is just going to amplify that. It's going to give you more. Another story I love to tell is just imagine you have someone special in your life. It could be a spouse, a child, a friend, and um, you're out shopping one day and you know, you're thinking about, we'll just call it your, we'll just call it your spouse. I'll, I'll just call him my husband. And um, I'm out shopping and I'm thinking about my husband and I'm thinking, you know, I, I see something and I know his style and I know he would appreciate it. I'm like, you know, he's, we'll call him John. You know, John's been really good to me and I really love John and I really want to show him my appreciation. And look at this incredible tie. It's just so beautiful. And, and he would absolutely love it, you know, wearing it to all the meetings that he shows up, you know, in every day. And it goes great with that new suit that he bought and it's in the perfect color and it's a perfect design. I know John will love it. And I'm so excited to even see what, you know, how appreciative he, he will be of it. So I, buy that tie, I pay for that tie, put it in a box and I, and I wrap the box and I put in this gorgeous bow that's in the perfect color. It's his favorite color and this box looks gorgeous. It's incredible. And I come home and I give it to my husband and John's like, what, what is this for? Why are you, you know? And, and I'm like, I just love you so much. I want to give you this gift. He's like, oh my God, this is so incredible. Wow. Look at this box and look at this bow. You did this for me. This is so beautiful. And, and blue, that's my favorite color. Thank you so much. And he gives me a hug and a kiss. And he's like, should I open it? Can I open it now? And he starts opening it up very carefully. And He's like, wow, you you know, this is just such a beautiful box. And he opens a tie. He's like, oh my God, this is going to be perfect with my suit. How wonderful. Thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm so grateful. You are just such the best wife in the world. I love you so much. Thank you for being so thoughtful. And he gives me a big hug and, you know, and, and he's just so grateful. Imagine doing that. How would you feel as the gifter? For me, I would just feel like, wow, you know, he was so appreciative. He really loved that tie. He really loved that I took the time out to buy that. And, and he was just so grateful that for that. How incredible. And I'm out shopping the next week and I see something else, maybe, you know, tie clip. And, and, and he had mentioned earlier that, um, you know, his tie was slipping out and he needs to go get a tie clip. And I found this and it was just a, the perfect design. And I knew he would love it. And I, you know, he was just so happy with that other gift. I want to get this for him because I know how happy it makes him. And so I buy that clip and I put in a gorgeous box with a gorgeous ribbon and the beautiful blue color, exactly the color he loves. And again, take really great care and wrapping in, I bring it home and I'm like, John, look what I got for you. And, and he looks at me, he's like, oh, wow, thank you. That's so cool. You know, thank you for the gift. And he opens it up and, and he's like, oh, that's a really nice clip. Thank you, honey. And he gives me a kiss, a little kiss on the cheek. And he's like, okay. And then he goes off. How would you feel at that point? I know for me, I'd be like, well, you know, he wasn't that excited as he was the first time, but maybe it was just an off day, you know, maybe, I don't know, I didn't quite do that good of a job giving him what he wanted. Um, maybe, you know, just wasn't, wasn't feeling it. And so I didn't feel that great gifting him that second present as much as I did the first time. So I'm out shopping the next week and I find a beautiful gift a shirt really gorgeous shirt again would go great with that suit and that tie and that clip and I buy it in its favorite color and I know it'll look incredible and you know I have the the salespeople wrap it up and it put the gorgeous bow on it and take really good care that it's in the perfect color and the perfect box and just looks so beautiful and I come home and I'm like John look at what I got for you and he looks at it, he's like oh thank you and he grabs it and he's like I'll open it up later and he puts it to the side. 
How would you feel? Yeah, kind of yucky, huh? It doesn't feel as good anymore. It doesn't feel as good because he wasn't as grateful for that third gift as he was for that first. Now that's how the universe feels. The universe, God, divinity, whatever it is you want to call it, is abundance and wants to bestow upon you abundance. And oftentimes we look that gift and we just dismiss it. It wasn't the perfect color. It wasn't quite enough. It wasn't exactly what I wanted. You know, well, where's the rest of it? Oh yeah, this may, this money may get me through, you know, the next month, but what about the rest of the year? Oh, it's not everything I wanted. And the universe starts to look at us saying, you know, it, they're not very appreciative. We're not very good receivers most of the time. And all of us have been guilty of this. How often have we wanted something and the universe gave us something, maybe a little bit on the way to that final gift and we just stuck our nose up at it or we've tossed it aside or we weren't as grateful or as excited about it. And so that energy, we just sh um, downshifted, it diminished and the universe isn't going to continue to bring in those blessings if you can't recognize all the blessings you already have. So we want to get really good. We want to get really focused. We want to get really strong in our ability to be grateful and to notice and to celebrate all the blessings and gratitude um, and, and build those gratitude practices in our lives. So I wanted to share some simple gratitude practices. Number one is a gratitude, a daily gratitude journal. Spend a few minutes each day writing down things you're grateful for in a journal. This practice helps you become more conscious of the good in your life and can shift your mindset towards abundance and positivity. You're no longer constricted. You're open up to wow, my life's pretty good. And what I encourage you to do is not only write, you know, I'm grateful for X, Y, Z, find those things that you normally are not noticing in your life. And also look around and affirm the things that you have. You know, I have a cell phone. I have a computer. I have a plant that's growing. I have a view that I can look out and enjoy. I have a friend that I get to call. I have light so I can see, you know, so you could see me better. All those things we have, you know, I have my health. I have the ability to, to breathe without contraptions that I'll tell you so many people don't have. And so finding those blessings and writing those down. Number two is gratitude affirmations. Develop a set of positive affirmations centered around gratitude. You know, um, again, what is it that you want to attract more in your life? And affirm that those are already there. You know, gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership, as Dr. Joe always says. And so what does that mean? Usually we're grateful for things that we already have. And so when we put something out into the universe, when we put a thought out, when we put a vision out, when we put a dream out, if we're grateful for it already, the universe knows to bring it right to us because we're already vibrating at that vibration of it's already here. I'm not waiting for anything. Yes, it might be a matter of time, but it's already done. And so what that does is it sets things in motion in the quantum field for it to start to magnetize to you. So another practice is gratitude walks. You know, you could be out in nature, walking around your neighborhood, walking in the beach, consciously think about the things for which you're grateful for. And that combination of physical activity and positive thinking can have profound effects on your overall mood and perspective. One thing is it gets it from here into your cells, into your body, and it, it amplifies that in a much more profound way. Number five, I don't know what number we're on, <laughs> is uh, mindful eating with gratitude. This is really powerful for those who perhaps have um, some struggles with emotional eating or struggles with disconnecting with their body when it comes to eating and filling their body, you know, especially people who are particularly empaths. Um, 
food and eating and taste is all connected to emotions. And so when you're eating mindfully with gratitude, you know, before you eat a meal, take a moment to appreciate the food in front of you, slow down, slow down and consider the journey that it took to read the food took to reach your plate. This practice can help foster a deeper connection with the world around you, gratitude for nature, gratitude for abundance, appreciation for all the abundance in your life. And it also connects you with that deep part of you that can connect with your own body so that you are only nourishing your body with things that are nourishing. You're not stuffing food down. You are paying attention what with what what foods bring you joy and connection and health and vitality and that in itself will make you healthier will allow your body to run more smoothly so another gratitude practice gratitude letters write a letter to someone who has positively impacted your life expressing your appreciation for them um, in writing, you know, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be letters, although old school letters is always appreciated so much more. Um, but sending a text, sending a message, those in itself can cultivate feelings of gratitude and positivity, because what you're doing is you're recognizing other people's gifts in your life. We're not meant to be alone on this planet. We are social creatures. We are tribal creatures. And this community that we build helps us all to grow. So appreciating the community that you have, the people that are there for you, the people that support you helps amplify again, the blessings in life and creates new avenues for more blessings to come to you and be magnetized to you. Number seven is visualize gratitude. Use the power of visualization to amplify feelings of gratitude. Picture the things you're grateful for and picture the abundance that you are wanting to attract and allow those positive emotions to bubble up inside of you as you bring those images to mind. You know, the Bible talks about ask and you shall receive. Now, the part that is is not so well known because it's in the, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls and some of these other scrolls that have been found after the, the King James Version and other Bible versions have, have been um, written is asking ye shall be receive and act and be filled with the emotions as if it's already here. That's the, truly the key to the law of attraction. It's we have to fill up with the emotions of it already here. You know, it's not, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, but it's, I'll see it when I believe it. That believing part is ultimately what we have to focus on in order to create what we want. A couple of fun things is a gratitude jar. It's, um, you know, a jar that we can have that you can place in your home in a prominent place. And each day, write something you're grateful for on a piece of paper and put it in the jar. You can have a stack of little pieces of paper next to you with a pen. And then write something down and put it in. And over time, you'll have a tangible representation of the abundance in your life. And when you are particularly down, because maybe you're having a rough day, or maybe something um, tough is going on in your life, and it's hard to find the blessings or the abundance in your life, that's the perfect time to open up that jar and remind yourself how many blessings you have and how many times you've been bestowed this great abundance from the universe. And we need those reminders. We may think, oh my gosh, all this wonderful stuff happened to me. I'll never forget. But the fact is, is, is human beings, we have very short-term memories. So we need this to fall back on. We need this to remind ourselves that we are abundant and that we prosper more and more each day. Um, and that brings us to gratitude reminders. Place sticky notes um, all over where, you know, on your, on your bathroom mirror next to your cell phone, on your laptop, sticky notes with written affirmations or things that you're grateful for, put them around your living space or working space, and they will serve as constant reminders to appreciate the good in your life. And finally, practice bedtime gratitude reviews. Um, this, this practice is so powerful because before you go to bed, if you, you know, it's, it's, we process the day over our nighttime. And when you can end the day 
focusing on all the good in your life. You go to sleep with those positive emotions. During those eight hours of rest and rejuvenation, you'll be playing over and over and over all that positive energy. And that's going to make a significant difference in the quality of your sleep and in how much you can continue to resonate with, meaning your vibration lifts. And we, we all know, and I think we talked about this last time, the higher your vibration is, the more you are able to attract good things in your life. So each night before going to sleep, reflect on the positive things that happen during the day. And this practice, again, can help the, end the day with a positive note and attract more positivity and abundance into your life. And if you had a particularly challenging day, write the blessings of what you were able to accomplish. You know what? I dealt with this challenge without losing it. I wouldn't say without losing it, but I would say I, I kept my demeanor in this challenging time. That is a win. That's an accomplishment. I, I was able to handle that, that challenging conversation, you know, with someone, if it was a lesson you learned, you know, I learned that, um, I can stand up for myself in tough situations. So even a learning is a blessing. And those bedtime gratitude reviews will help you again, amplify all of that. So I want you to remember that gratitude, the practice of gratitude is powerful in order to cultivate and manifest abundance. It helps you to unleash joy, wealth, and fulfillment in your life. So it's, it's as I say with a lot of these, it's not a nice to have, it's a must have in your practice. So I wanna hear from you. What is one practice you're gonna implement in your life? And what is one thing you are grateful for? Please comment, please share. And um, let us know what you would love us to cover for next time. If you're not here live, I encourage you to come join us live. There's power in the vortex that we create on our live calls. So please join us. We'll see you in a few weeks. And um, I'm in the Facebook group. I'd love to hear you, um, uh, your questions, your comments in the Facebook group. And share this group with people that you believe would really add to this group. This is the Facebook group for conscious business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs, people who are committed to personal growth and development, people who want to tap into unlimited possibilities in, our, in your life, and people who know that there's so much more to see and that there's unlimited possibilities for all of us. So please share this. I love you all. I'm so happy to be sharing this with you and we'll see you all very soon. Lots of love. Bye-bye.